it might be Y2K, but some people are still excluded from using their vote. Channel 4 now checks out the problems. There are about a million people with a learning disability in this country. Only around 1 in 20 votes. That figure could be 1 in 2 if those in power did something about it. So far as I know, I am not on the voting register. When I get an electoral registration form, can I fill it in? No. The polling station staffs uh, goes, no, they were basically treating us like a dog. <laughs> we are part of the human race and we, we are, have the right to vote for, for like anyone else. One in 60 people in the UK have a learning disability. For those with a severe disability, they need more help in most things in their life. For me, I need help with things like filling in complicated forms. I choose what I want to do, when I want to do, and how I do it properly. I live in this flat, but I get some support from, from outreach. I've been working with London Transport and the Department of Transport to set up a project that to make um, transport maps more, more accessible for people with learning disability. And the main important thing is getting the right information. Richard West didn't vote in the last general election. He wasn't on the electoral register because he found the form too complicated to fill in. When it comes to running the country, it means that every single information on voting is supposed to be made fully accessible. As a deaf person with learning disability, I found it very hard. I don't know how to vote. And um, all I just get is just a piece of paper saying that's where to go. And uh, I, 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 I just leave it. <laughs> Having a learning difficulty does not mean you don't care about the world you live in, nor does it mean you're not entitled to a vote. It's your chance to say that to how you can run the country. The only democratic thing in this country is the vote. It's a powerful weapon. It's going to affect our lives for the next four years. For a group of people who are so underrepresented here, the fact is people with learning difficulties depend on the legislation made at Westminster more than most other people for things like education where children with learning difficulties are more likely to be excluded from mainstream schools. Housing is important too. Now most of us live in the community. Benefits are another issue. We find it difficult to find jobs. Health's important. People with learning difficulties are more likely to have another impairment that needs health care. So why is it that so few of us vote? It was so complicated, it wasn't, the sheet wasn't accessible, and I didn't know how many ticks you put for each one. Having a learning disability it makes it more harder for a person to read. I find there's too much jargon. Some people give up because the, the form is complicated and, and it's, it's difficult for them to understand. They give up on voting for, for, the, for the, their, their candidate or their party. Lots of people don't make it on the register. Sometimes it's because parents do not think their children are capable of voting. My mum and dad did not say to my brother, stop voting, but they did to me. My mum and dad said to me when I was 18, would I like to vote? And I said yes. And they said, oh, we're not going to allow you to vote until you were 21. So they... <laughs> because they didn't think I understand the voting system. Sometimes it's the staff of homes who are denying residents their democratic right. Well, I asked the housing mistress, and she said she was doing what she could do, but I heard nothing back. I am now in Clifton, and I haven't voted for nearly six years.
It's for job of a local authority to ensure people are registered. We did a survey of 50 councils and only seven said they had specific guidelines for staff of registered accommodation to make sure residents were entered onto the electoral roll. It was like double dutch to me when they were saying a few things like they were saying so many words that was a bit too complicated for me to be able to understand even if, if I am Italian. My problem isn't the fact that I know uh, how to uh, write my name and address on the form. My problem is uh, where do they actually want me to put that on the form? And it could be so much easier. People First London is the leading self-advocacy group campaigning for people with learning difficulties. I want to know what its director, Andrew Lee, makes of the form. This is impossible to read. <laughs> For someone who gets yeah. this put through their letterbox, they're on their own, yeah, yeah. and they read and they try and read yeah. that, and they think, my goodness, yeah. I mean, this information really should just want this one mm. sheet mm. should be on two two, uh, two sheet and size yeah. eight, si uh, si 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 size 18. Any person failing to comply mm. with or giving false information in in per, in per, in per, something in, 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 pursuit. <laughs> in pursuit of this requisition, re I think, yeah. shall be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding one thousand pounds. What on earth is that about? I don't know. This government is, keeps on talking about equal rights. They're even now talking about citizenship. I think they could start with you know starting well. to make the voting forms more accessible. I don't think this form should be allowed to stand between people and their right to vote. The Home Office is responsible for elections, so I'm going to ask the Minister what he's going to do about it. Many people learning difficulties find this form totally inac inaccessible. They don't even get to the first hurdle. I think you're right, and what we need to do is to revise that form so that it's, it's much more straightforward uh, for people to sign. I don't think we need a form that is this complicated. Uh, many people without any learning disabilities at all uh, find complex forms like this, uh, put them off, and therefore I think you're quite right to say that this needs to be improved. When, and when, when is that we want like, to set about And will it be that. improved by the, in time for the next general election? I very much hope it will be. I can't guarantee to you at the moment because we have to talk to electoral registration officers. I'm glad the minister accepts there is a problem. But what's actually happening on the ground? Each local authority produces its own version of the form and is responsible for collecting the information. Many of them provide support for groups with different needs, but what about people with learning difficulties? We asked 50 local authorities what they were doing to make the voting process more accessible for people with learning difficulties. None of them were, had produced simplified information, especially for people with learning difficulties. A lot of people with learning difficulties, like ourselves, do not know um, politics right. and how it works. We, right. There's no accessible information of right. what these parties do. Yeah. It's all in jargon. And they seem to think we're stupid because we've got a learned of tea, and that's why they don't put anything across to right. us. There's no point in voting unless you understand what the political parties stand for. The Disability Discrimination Act states that this stuff should be made accessible for disabled people, including people with learning difficulties. But nobody seems to have told the political parties yet. Some of the print is too small to understand, and some of the wording is not understandable. Even though I can read, I just find I couldn't read the information that was being put out in the manifesto. We'd like to see a manifesto which, which has got symbols and pictures and easy to, uh, to simple language format. And it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Bayes Interaction is an organisation representing people with learning difficulties. They specialise in making information accessible. Robert Ebank and I took from the latest manifestos from the three major parties to see what they could do in a day's work with a single paragraph on transport. 
Okay, let's take a sentence like this. After completing the modernization of the network, the majority of remaining surplus from privatization will be channeled into additional support for transport investment in London and elsewhere in the country. And what we did with, with that sentence was, was change it to, after the underground has been improved, the money left over from the sale will be used to improve the other transport <laughs> in London and other places. And we've sort of accented that with a picture as well, sort of suggesting money will be put into buses and trains. I like the pictures. I like the um, I like the pictures, so people who found it who found, who are slight reading but would like to read it would be able to say I'm not really interested in in um, in in railway. I'll turn it over and think Ah, underground. Yeah, I'm really quite interested in knowing what the government are going to do with the underground. What we've tried to do here is is to make it much clearer. Uh, you'll immediately see that the writing is much bigger, the printing is, is much bigger size. There's lots of space between the words, between the lines. We've put in the symbols no. for, the, for the party and a photograph of the leader of each yeah. of the party so that you can pick up who it is. After the underground has been improved, the money left over from this sale... Making forms accessible involves consultation. I like the new versions. But what does Robert think? Yeah, I would say this is more easier to understand than that. It's more clearer and it's simpler. Yeah. You've certainly cut yes. out the crap. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, Westminster, to confront the political parties. The law requires them to make their party political information accessible. But have they really done anything about it? Since politicians' speech can be as complicated as their writing, we're subtitling these interviews with simplified text. But would you actually consider the manifesto as accessible for people with learning difficulties? Well, that's the one for the last election, and we're not refighting the last election. In fact, we better not. Uh, all political parties have not been as good in this area as they should have been in the past. Uh, I think they can do better. Okay. What I'd like to show you was we, um, values in, uh, we've asked values into action to make the Conservative Party's manifesto, or part of it, on transport accessible for people with learning difficulties. As the disability spokesperson, would you make the commitment to make it accessible? Well, thank you for that. I hadn't seen that draft. That's great. Um, it's very clear. Um, I will not make any commitment to the Conservative Party because I'm not in a position to make it like that, because it's not a decision I would take on the manifesto. What I will tell you is that I will certainly um, use that as an opportunity. I will make sure it is fed into the system. We will need to think about it more than we have done in the past. We may well be able to do some of this. We can't do it in the next couple of months. There is more time before a general election. We will have to see how most positively we can do that. Not much of a commitment, and we didn't get much better from the Lind Thames. I mean, would you consider yeah. your manifesto at the moment which were your last manifesto to be accessible for people with learning difficulties? Um, no, I don't. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in this form. Uh, and um, I mean, my own personal defense in, in that is that, uh, is that, first of all, the manifesto itself was available on, on tape. Um, the language used is the language used to probably you find in all, in all manifestos. Do we need, do we need a, a further form of interpretation? Absolutely, we do. Would you be prepared yes. to make your manifesto available in the next elections in a similar way? Um, I mean, clearly there are, there, are, there are democratic processes within the party. Um, so if I, said, if, I said, if, I, if I said that my commitment is to take this to the Federal Policy Committee who will decide uh, and also take this to the, to the party's um, executive you know, to decide, and make a very strong case um, that we uh, we do in, we do uh, make every effort to to uh, um, uh, you know, have the have the party's manifesto um, translated in this format. Then I would uh, I, I would certainly make that make that commitment here and now. Right. Labour wouldn't provide a spokesperson, but they did give us a statement offering to take on board our insights. With none of the parties actually committing to produce a simplified text and picture version, we'll have to wait for the next set of manifestos to find out if any of their good intentions will be turned into action.
Thank you. Hi. At the AA, we're dedicated to getting you safely on your way. So, if we can fix your car by the side of the road, we'll fix it by the side of the road. With our new offer, for £40, your car is covered for any driver. Call 0800 444 999 for details. It's May, and London's preparing to elect a mayor. This time, Richard is not going to miss out. He's now got himself onto the electoral roll. The consultant to this program helped him with reform, but had stopped him from voting before. I don't really, not really understand the shame, but it does say don't roll. And yeah, I don't know what's first. Right, well, as you've quite rightly said, this is asking for, for a date. Um, it's asking for a birth date. But it's a bit more complicated than that because it's not asking for your birth date. What it's saying at the top here is if you are 16 or 17 years old, you should fill in your date of birth well, here. What does one it mean? Well, this one doesn't Pro actually mean anything. Um, yeah. This is just a little box at the top of the form, which I suspect is probably used in the office. Yeah. It turns out that what stood between him and voting was writing down four simple things. In recent years, there have been voter registration drives for expats, young people and the black community. Given the way the system excludes us, isn't it time we did the same thing for people with learning difficulties? So a lot of people aren't getting onto the register. The registration form and the party political literature are hard to understand. Fortunately, the government have made some improvements to the actual voting process. For the first time this election, postal votes are available on demand. Mobile polling stations are being tested. Also, you can ask a friend or the presiding officer for help in filling out your ballot paper. Richard's determined to vote, but he's worried about filling in the ballot paper. I have a problem with um, filling forms. I don't know what these words mean, which really confuses me. Fortunately, his local outreach group Westminster City Living is a great example of how organisations can help people with learning difficulties enjoy a role as full citizens. It runs a workshop explaining the voting process to its members. You know who you want to vote for, but you don't know where they are. In the polling station, there should be at least two people. One's called what's called a presiding officer, and the other one is called a polling clerk. Their job is to help you to vote. That's what they're there for. They're there so that if somebody has a difficulty voting for whatever reason, they're there to help you. That's what they're paid to do. I don't know if they're paid actually, but that's what they're there for. Okay? <laughs> the staff stand in for the candidates to communicate their policies and provoke a debate. Doing role plays, it gives me a chance to, to make my mind up which part I want to vote for. And its people. As leader of the GLC, the Greater London Council, for five years, I started popular public transport policies to get people out of their cars and onto the buses and tubes. I'm pretending, obviously, to be Frank, so all I'm going to do is read what I know about him. So any questions you might ask... How are you, how are you going to make sure that um, disabled people can get the right sort of houses? Well, that's obviously a very big uh, job, isn't it, Mr West? 
Also, it was the conservative Ubra, Ubra King, the poet, huh? which caused a lot of yeah. riots. Well said. Well said. Well said. Well said. It was also the conservative who privatized, who privatized the, hospital. The, the hospital, who privatized water, who privatized the electric. Come on. What are you going to say about that? I care much less about who owns the tube than I do about whether it works. Who owns it makes no difference to anyone. What we want is the services that work for London. Once they've heard the policies, the workshop ends with a mock election. It gives everyone the chance to practice what they'll do on the day. Unlike the real elections, they announce the winner straight away. Okay, the results of the um, City Living Westminster election for 2000. With 8% of the vote came Stephen Norris, Conservative. With 12% of the vote came Frank Dobson, Labour. Also with 12% of the vote came Jeffrey Ben Nathan, the pro-motorist and small shop candidate. <laughs> but the overall winner, with 64%, was Ken Livingston. So we just have to wait and see where those statistics come out next Thursday as well. Inspired by the workshop, Richard and three friends go to the public hustings at Alexander Palace to challenge the candidates. He doesn't care about the same people anyway. What are you doing? How are you going to go to the right? Which are you going to do about it? What are you doing? They also get to hear the candidates speaking for themselves. The reason for the congestion charge, because we want a city that is pleasant to walk around in. But the best way to form an opinion is to question them directly. In the race to become mayor of London, what are you going to do to help people with brain disability play a good active role in London's affair if they become mayor? It is really important that if we are to have a public transport system, it's got to be public, it's got to be for everyone, not just the able-bodied majority. What the mayor has to do is to make sure that those resources to be devoted to education and training are accessible yeah. by every Londoner. I don't believe disabled people should be penalised in this city by the sheer accident of which side of a borough boundary they live on. Yeah, okay. yeah I agree with that. question is from Alamara. My parents didn't put me on the register, so at 18, I was unable to vote. Since then, I have made up for it. In May, I stood at the Greater London 40 elections as a Green Party candidate in Brenton Harrow, where I got 9% of the vote. Unless we're elected, people like you and I don't get to make the big decisions that affect all of our lives. Things like tax increases, going to war, cutting disability benefits. It's the people we elect who do this for us. Our way of affecting what happens here is by marking an X on the ballot sheet. Voting is very, very important to me because it helps me to give me my rights and my choice and, and it gives me my say. It's having a chance to say, I want this sorted out, not your way sorted out. You have to have the inner strength to say, I don't want that. I want you to do it my way. Richard's made up his mind. He's on the register this time and has his polling card to prove it. I know who I want to vote for. The problem is that it's got so many different names. It, it makes it even more confusing. Fortunately, he knows he can ask the officials. I went up to desk to get some help. I said to him that I can't fill in forms. So he helped me to name all the people on the form, and then I just tell them to stop, and I know who the person is to vote for. Mission accomplished. It was a relief, saying that I, I, I just did it. And if people can't vote or don't vote, you lose a chance of saying that I don't like the way they're running the country. So it's very, very important to make sure that you put your name on the piece of paper 
and then put it in a box saying that I've done that.